stand with me this morning.
his presence from the moment that I entered prayer meeting this morning. I can feel his presence. Don't go far from that, Ms. Sheree, because we're going to sing it again. Some of you need to wake yourselves up this morning and realize that we have an opportunity to entertain the presence of the almighty king who is worthy of every praise. Can feel his presence. It's been my desire. I came in this morning and I said, Lord, I just need to feel your presence. And if you don't feel his presence, I'll be honest with you. There are times that I've stood up here and I thought, Lord, I could see his presence among you, but I didn't feel it like you felt it. And no, it's not, it's not about an act, but it's about me saying, but Lord, I desire and I want it. So I'm going to continue on after it. Lord, I'm hungry for you. Lord, I am hungry for you. God, I need you. But you know what? I can feel his presence this morning. I can feel it this morning. King of heaven. service, Lord. Let strongholds be broken. God, as people have entered into this place, Lord, I pray, God, that they will not leave the same as they walked in those doors. God, I pray that every chain would break and every piece of anxiety that has been felt in the each, each body in this room, Lord, let it fall away. Change our hearts and change our minds. God, do the work that only you can do because you are the king of heaven. You are the king of our hearts. God, we lift you up. We give you the praise and the glory that you deserve. Hallelujah. Give them a praise in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Father God, we love you today. We bless you and praise you. We give you glory and honor, Father Lord. And God, as I think about the vastness of the universe, Father, the vastness and the sovereignty of you, God, Father, it's no... Uh, 
Father, there's no comparison, Lord, to who you are, what you are, and all that you can do, Father Lord. I pray, God, that you'll open our eyes this morning, Father God, that we will see, God, just how big of a God we serve today, Father. God, that you are in full control of everything, Father, down to the very minutes of our own single lives, Father. The very hairs of our head are counted by you, Father. Not one comes out or grows, Lord, that you don't know about it. So, Father God, I'm asking, Father, for your perfect will to be done in this place today. God, let your will be a Established, Father, in this place, I decree and declare the day, Father, that this is there's an open heaven over this church, Father God. And if you just spoke to me that you said these people have not come into this place just to check off a checklist, but they have come today because this is an appointed time of God. So, Father, let your will be done, God, that for those of us that are here and those that are watching, Father, online, let your will be done today, Father. Father, we pray for your sovereign power over us, Lord. Father, that we would surrender our lives to you wholly, Father. God, is our desire today. Father, Lord, we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to you. So, God, use us according to your good will today. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Ushers, as you are coming. Today, folks, our, our, uh, our offerings are going to our missions. I don't know how many of you ever left your home and gone on a mission trip before, but it's an experience, one I'll never forget. I've been able to go on a couple. But to be away from home and to be away from those things, and you can be seated, to be away from home and to be away from the things that you know as your own surroundings and your own comforts, is to leave all that is something. To be doing it for the Lord, it's, it's an awesome responsibility and an awesome opportunity. So we're giving unto the missions today. I'm asking you to be led by the Spirit to do what God wants you to do today as far as your offering and your giving. Father, we thank you, Father, for your presence in this place today. God, as we humbly submit ourselves to you, God, and surrender unto you, I'm asking you, Father, to speak to us today. Let your will be done in our lives, Father. Sometimes these roads get hard that we go down, Lord, but you're always there to comfort. You're always there to pick us up. So, Father God, we're asking you today, God, to use this offering for the building of your kingdom, for the places that it's going. Bless our missions, God, that we support. In Jesus' name, amen. life, we get comfortable. I like a comfortable life. I like being comfortable. 
Pastor John to tell you right now, when I walk in the door today, I have something called comfy pants. And as soon as my feet hit the floor, my heels are going to come off and the comfy pants are going to be on. Because I like being comfortable. But he didn't put us here to be comfortable. He has a plan for us. But you know what? Even though sometimes I may not necessarily feel comfortable, I'm not comfortable standing before you ever. Never. I'm never comfortable up here. There's a there's a reverence that comes along with, Lord, I want to follow your will, and I want to follow your way, and it gets me out of my comfort zone. But I will say this, even though I'm not necessarily comfortable, I always have peace, the peace that he gives. And that's because I have decided to make him the king of my heart. And this is something that's been on my my mind this week. Is he the king of your heart? If you look at your if you look at your life, does your life portray that he's your king? You know, so often the time that I spend, I love my family so much. I love my kids. Oh, I just love them. And I love spending time with them. I love spending time with my husband, but if that's all that I have in this life, then, then I've put them as my king. And then I'm out of order and I'm off kilter because there's only one that can be king and that's God Almighty, the King of Kings. He has to be the king of my heart. And you know, when I, when I let, let that slip away, you know, he never leaves me. He never leaves. I'm the one that takes him off his rightful place. And when I take him off his rightful place and my flesh becomes my king, that's when I don't feel his presence. And it's not because he's left me. It's because I've said, I'm going to make this my king for a little while. But don't fret today because... There's always room for him to be the king of your heart. He's always willing. He's always ready. And all it does, is, all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm going to praise you because you're the king of my heart. And you know what I also pray? I say, pray, I pray and I say, Lord, give me that hunger. I want to, I want to hunger after you. I want you to be the king. Pastor and I started eating healthy this week. And as, as soon as you start eating healthy, you are as hungry as you can be. Everything that is inside, you want to eat it. <laughs> Lord, I want that hunger for you. Be the king of my heart. Be the king of my life. Take your rightful place that you deserve. Hallelujah.
just continue to seek him right where you're at. Father, I'm desperate for you. So desperate Hallelujah. for you. Are you desperate for him today? You know, a desperate man will go to extreme. He went to extreme measures to get to you. Are you willing to go through extreme measures to get to him? To give him every part of your life? Folks, I want to be desperate. But I wonder sometimes if I am desperate for him today. But I want to be. That's my desire. Amen. Hallelujah. We're lost without it. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord today. If you got your Bible, we're going to get right into the Word of God. I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 18 this morning. Revelation chapter 18, and I want to begin reading in verse 1. The Bible says, And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice come from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Lord, we come to you today, God. We're living in a world right now, God, I pray, that wants to consume us. We're fighting an enemy, God, that would, his, his main objective is to steal, kill, and destroy our lives. But Lord, I pray, as we just sung today, May you be a consuming fire, Lord God. May, Lord, you consume every part of us that we are so desperate for you, God, that we will not look to the left or the right, but we will be gazing upon Jesus. And, Lord, today I pray, work in this place, move in this house. You have been, Lord, coming into this place week after week and visiting with us and ministering to us, God. Help us to realize how special, Lord, that is, God. And help us today to respond to your presence, Lord. We just thank you, Jesus. Thank you for it today. We ask it all in your name. Thank you for your word. Amen. Amen. You can be seated on your way down. Just smile at your neighbor. You know, sometimes it's just good to see somebody smile every once in a while. And you've had a good week, a holiday week. You probably cooked out. You probably uh, ate more than you should have. I know I did. And, uh, and then Thursday, Sister Courtney says, we're going to eat better today. I said, okay. So I've been starving ever since and came in this morning. <laughs> and Sister Audrey put a fresh, hot apple pie on my desk. So, uh, so some of you fellas stay out of my office afterward. <laughs> oh, but I tell you, God's good. We had a wonderful week. I want to thank every one of you. This church came together last week, and we had a crowd, I'm telling you, of people here we were able to just enjoy each other's presence. It was hot, but we enjoyed it, and I want to thank everybody for banding together. We just had a special day. I don't think there was one person here that walked away and said, I didn't have a wonderful time in the Lord. It was a wonderful day, and we just want to thank you again for a, a good day, and God just blessing us. Uh, it's good to see Brother Neil and Miss Cheryl with us today, all the way from Oregon, but yeah, give me, give me a hand clap. But this time is permanent. And uh, so, amen. Uh, and I, I'm just sure that God's got great things in store for them. But we were able to help unload the truck on Friday and get Brother Neil settled in and he and his wife. And we're just looking forward to God blessing them. And, and we're just glad that they're here. We're glad you're here, every one of you today. It's good to see you. And, uh, you know, I'm a guy that likes to be prepared. My wife will tell you that. I, I don't like surprises. <laughs> I don't like unexpected things. I like to be prepared. If you're coming to my house, I like to be ready for you. But I have found there have been times and situations in my life 
even though I knew something was coming, I just didn't feel prepared. I remember in 2017, my dad's passing was one of those times. The doctor had told us that day was coming. We knew that it was coming. We watched things going on in my dad's life, but I just was not prepared when that day finally came. Even now, I, our children growing up, everybody, just all of our life has told us if you blink, they'll be grown. Just, just enjoy the time. And I'm looking now, and she's not here today, pray for her. She's not feeling well, but my baby girl is about to turn 16 years old. And I think, man, where has the time gone? I'm not prepared <laughs> for her to get on the road. You know, we've been working on this. She's bought her car, and we've tried to get it in good working order, but she was telling me the other day, Dad, I want to go for my license. And I thought, don't you just want to keep your permit a little longer? Because <laughs> once you get your license, we're going to start paying insurance on you, and uh, you're going to be out on your own. And I was thinking she'd be on the back roads of Alabama, learning country roads, driving, and I, I, I just, I'm not prepared for her to get out in the middle of Charleston and Somerville and get out here in the masses and four lanes wide and traffic everywhere. And I, I, I just, it's here. I knew it was coming. I'm just not prepared for it. And as I was preparing this week to preach, I was reminded of the words of James who said, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. For what is your life? It appears for a little time, then it vanishes away. It's like a vapor, he said. I read something not long ago by Brother David Green, the founder of Hobby Lobby, he said, we've got a vapor life and we have an eternal life. And he asked the question, how you run a business, how you live your life, how you do what you do in your life, do you spend time and energy on the vapor life or the eternal life? And I began to think, what am I preparing for? How many times throughout the years we have sat in a church like this and, and we've heard warnings and the times that we're experiencing right now, the times that we're living in right now, we've been told they're coming. Yes. We've heard that something big is about to happen, that Jesus is coming soon, that our vapor life is going to come to an end one of these days, uh, and it could be very, very soon. Uh, we just sung about it. Uh, we sing songs like soon and very soon uh, we are going to meet the king. Uh, uh, when we all get to heaven, we talk about what a day uh, of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, uh, we're going to sing uh, and we're going to shout the victory. Uh, uh, I'm telling you, over the years, we've heard it so much. Uh, we've even and heard people over dramatize uh, much of this uh, and make false predictions uh, about the coming of the Lord and mishandle the scripture in so many ways. Uh, uh, but we have been studying much of this in Daniel and Revelation extensively uh, on our Wednesday night Bible studies. Uh, and, and it's in an effort to make people uh, uh, ready uh, to meet the Lord, prepared. My wife tells me, John. That's all interesting stuff, but sometimes it just gets really deep. You know, just sometimes it's just really heavy. And I think, Lord, I, we preach this. People are tired of hearing that you're coming soon, yet we continue to see a society around us that is deteriorating everywhere we look. Uh, uh, many have this feeling uh, when you talk to them, well, I, I think I'm ready to meet the Lord uh, uh, as much as I know how to be. Uh, others say, well, I, I just don't think things are going to get that bad. Uh, uh, we're just going to kind of go on with life, uh, which means in many ways uh, uh, the church is hearing, but we're not really heeding to what we're hearing. 
And I'm saying today as God's people, we need to be preparing like never before uh, for what is coming upon this world uh, and preparing uh, in our lives uh, to meet our soon coming king. Uh, uh, and there's only one thing that totally prepares you uh, for what is coming, uh, and that is a true, uh, genuine relationship with Jesus Christ uh, through prayer, uh, through reading his word, uh, through worship, uh, through acting out the life of Jesus every single day uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we've got to make our calling uh, and our election sure. Second Peter chapter 1, he says, whereby we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness charity. He said, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things, he said, is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, he said, ye shall never fall. Now listen, folks. If it wasn't possible to fall, Peter wouldn't have instructed us to do these things. To make sure, he said, that we don't fall. That's the only way we can stand up and say, no matter what comes, uh, I am ready to meet Jesus. Uh, whether he calls me home uh, 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 by the way of the grave uh, and I stop breathing my last breath and my st heart stops beating, uh, or whether he comes in the clouds uh, and I'm alive and remain to the rapture of the church, uh, you can say, hey, uh, I'm ready to meet Jesus. Uh, and I think we're living in a time uh, where we've heard this so often uh, and we've talked about it uh, and sung about it uh, and and preached about it. Uh, you might even have a mindset this morning, well, I've heard all this, Brother John. You're just like a broken record, preacher. You know, sometimes we get a little stirred in a place like this. We get a little wound up. We think about it a little more for just a period of time, but we've heard it so often. And this world just keeps dragging on day by day uh, uh, that we walk out the door and we get back into the mainstream of life. Uh, uh, we turn the news on. We hear about earthquakes and floods and storms uh, and violence and disease and famines and war and calamities. Uh, but there's so much of it happening. Uh, it's going on all the time. Uh, it's all around us. Uh, uh, but folks, some of this, it will affect us for a moment. But I remember three years ago, right in the middle of this pandemic when the state said we had to shut our doors. I heard people saying, oh, I can't wait till the doors of the church open up again. I'm gonna be there, brother. I can't wait. Man, there's going to be a massive inflow. Anybody hear stuff like that? Man, when the doors open, uh, there's going to be a flood into the church. Uh, uh, but even as we took a break for several months uh, and had to just stay at home and had to do this video online stuff, uh, 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 as things finally opened up, uh, you know what I noticed the main thing that we've gotten back to? Uh, the main thing we've gotten back to is mainstream living. And I believe it's time for God's people to be preparing not to get back to mainstream living, uh, but preparing uh, by making our calling and election sure in this hour. And we need to be preparing uh, by moving away from the gods of this world. Amen. Do you remember the plagues in Exodus? How God essentially went to war with the false pagan Egyptian gods. They had a God for everything. And he showed himself strong. And the overall thought of God bringing his children out of Egyptian bondage and taking them 
to a, another land that he had given them as an inheritance was it so they could be distinct, separated, different from all the other people around them. And he told them, and I'm paraphrasing today, I'm going to lead you through these pagan lands. you got to go through it. But he said, you cannot adapt their ways. You can't start thinking like they think. You can't assimilate into their culture. He even told them, don't marry their men, don't marry their women, don't worship their idol gods. Make you sure you keep a distinction uh, between who you are and who they are. Uh, you're my people. He said, I called you, I chose you, I redeemed you, and my expectation uh, is that you live uh, and honor and glorify me. Uh, uh, he was telling them, if I were pleased uh, with those heathen nations, uh, I wouldn't need you. If they were living in a way that blesses and honors me, I would not need a called out people. But this world uh, has turned completely uh, unto unrighteousness. And he was telling them, I've raised you up uh, that you might show the world who I am, uh, that you might testify uh, that there's one true and living God, uh, and he has a standard by which his people ought to live. But in the New Testament, we see today in our text in the very last book of the Bible, this revelation of Jesus Christ. In verse 4, he says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached into heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. And I'm here to tell you today, just because we have left the Old Testament and we have moved into the New Testament uh, just because there is the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ just because there is a new covenant uh, in Christ does not mean that God's people have permission uh, to mix and mingle and change any more now than they did then. Uh, he's called us uh, uh, folks uh, out as a church in this hour. That's what the church, the word church means. Uh, it comes from the word ecclesia which means a called out assembly. God is calling us away from the gods of this world. Uh, he's trying to say, don't serve uh, the gods of this world. Uh, don't get caught up in pride uh, and rebellion uh, and disobedience uh, and all the things that this world is doing in this hour. God is looking for a people uh, who will move away from this world uh, and accept his invitation uh, to be a called out uh, people for him. And here we see in this last book, in the very last chapters of the Bible, God is still saying to these tribulation saints, come out of her, my people. And I believe it's a message that applies to church saints in all ages. He said, separate from Babylon. Get out while you can. Don't mix with this world. Uh, it'll have more effect on you than you're going to have on it. And ultimately, he is telling them, Babylon is going to fall. Now what is Babylon? It's not just some ancient city or nation. Folks, my question today is, are we living in Babylon? Understand, Babylon has two components. There's a spiritual Babylon, which involves religion without salvation, centered around works, around a show, around entertainment. It's a religion that talks about the goodness of man and the potential of man. It's a religion based on money and buildings and a big show and false doctrines and dogmas, uh, but it has no power uh, uh, within it to save a man or a woman from their sins. Uh, it's a form of godliness that denies the power of the real Holy Spirit. Uh, and folks, I'm telling you, we are living in that day, uh, uh, a day of religious activity, uh, but, but, but rarely mentioning the shed blood of Jesus Christ or calling men to repentance. Uh, 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 folks, uh, uh, there, there's no stressing of holiness in God's house. Uh, and you can know it's spiritual Babylon uh, when men are more popular than Jesus. When people believe a man offers more than Christ and they build their life about 
around what a man says and what a man does. Uh, that's spiritual Babylon. Uh, when people are in bondage uh, to man-made denominations and worship creeds and dogmas more than the Word of God, that's spiritual Babylon uh, because Babylon puts people in bondage. Uh, Babylon burdens people. Uh, Babylon makes people think they're saved uh, because they're religious. Uh, Babylon blinds people. But the real genuine spirit of Jesus Christ, folks, let me tell you, it sets people free uh, to get saved. Uh, you don't have to submit to a man uh, who walks around in a robe uh, and claims he has the power of reconciliation. Uh, you don't have to have a man uh, interpret the scripture to you. Uh, you can walk with Christ. Uh, you can read his word for yourself. Uh, he can reveal it to you, uh, and the Holy Spirit will reveal what it says. Uh, uh, folks, Jesus uh, set men free from spirit. Spiritual Babylon. But we're also living in a time of economic Babylon. Because Babylon also represents human government. Did you notice in the scripture he said Babylon has fallen? Fallen? See, there's two components to it that's going to fall. You see, everything that human government does, if you haven't figured it out, Hopefully you figured it out under the Biden administration at least. Oh, now I've gone to meddling. I'm sorry. I just hit on somebody's man today. Everything that human government does, folks, is for money and power and recognition. Don't fool yourself today into thinking that government wants to help the poor or anybody else. It's a false thing. It's pretending that it's something that it is not. There's no honesty in government. There's no integrity in human government. It's filled with people trying to stay in power and direct and redirect money to support their self-interests uh, so they can live better, so they can keep their power, so they can stay in office. And I'm saying today as your pastor, I'm not here uh, to endorse uh, a candidate for 2024. Uh, I'm not going to give you all these voting lists and tell you who to vote for and what to do. Uh, all I'm going to tell you is get on your knees uh, and pray and ask the Lord to help you to make decisions uh, uh, that are godly. I'm not here to help in influence the outcome of another election. I, I'm here to preach Jesus Christ uh, uh, and tell you that Jesus saves. Uh, governments cannot. Uh, and if we're preparing for what's coming, uh, it's a time to move away from the systems of this world uh, and move away from the gods of this world uh, and draw closer to the one true King of kings uh, and Lord of lords in our life. Here's the Lord's condemnation of Babylon. He said, it's going to fall. Verse 2 says, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth are waxed, waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. You see, what you're seeing here. And this verse is spiritual Babylon and political Babylon begin to commit fornication. You see, religious Babylon is going to get into bed, well, it already has, with political Babylon so they can both stay in power. More and more, folks, we are going to see religion controlled by government. That's the way it's going to be in these last days. You might say, well, I know Jesus. I, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. See, that's what we like to say. Has he got you? Hey, that's wonderful. Praise the Lord. But if we're truly filled, spirit-filled, children of God, then we need to be looking closely at the other aspect of this. How much does political or commercial Babylon have an influence in our lives, folks? Commercial Babylon's about power and influence and money, uh, uh, affluence, uh, uh, materialism, things uh, uh, that this world uh, uh, tries to draw you in with to the place you want more of that. Uh, understand Babylon offers you something instead of Jesus. Babylon's beautiful. It's alluring. It's gonna, it smells good. It tastes wonderful. 
It intoxicates you to the place even God's people are going to get caught up in this system if we're not careful. We will devote time and energy and talents to serving it rather than serving God, uh, yet we know uh, that is not what pleases Jesus. Uh, we find ourselves uh, so many times torn between two worlds. Uh, it affects us. Uh, it pulls at us. Uh, it divides us. Uh, and that's why you hear this voice from heaven uh, uh, saying, Come out of her, my people. Uh, get out of that mess. Uh, quit trying to live in the kingdom uh, and live in the world. Quit trying uh, to be spiritually rich uh, and yet materially affluent. Uh, make up your mind. Uh, choose you this day whom you will serve. Uh, because Jesus said no man can serve two masters. You see, you can't be moving toward Jesus and toward the things of the world. It's not possible to love both equally. And when you love the one, Jesus said, you'll hate the other. If you cling to the one, you'll move away from the other. And I'm saying we need to be preparing by moving away from the gods of this world. And we need to prepare by moving deeper into the things of God. You see, part of the problem we're facing in the Church of America today is we're holding hands with spiritual Babylon. You see, we like what she offers. And we're flirting all the time with economic Babylon because we want our churches to be appealing to the world. But let me tell you today, our witness for Jesus Christ yes. will never be accomplished through compromising with Babylon. I'm to the place, I thank God for his supply. I praise God with what he has blessed us with, what he's blessed this church with. Uh, J. Hudson Taylor said God's work done God's way will never lack God's supply. I believe God's house, uh, it ought to look better than my house. Uh, it ought to look nice. Uh, it ought to look right. Uh, uh, but monetary wealth and things uh, was not the key to the church of Acts turning the world upside down for Jesus. Uh, in fact, uh, Peter even told one fellow who was crippled, uh, uh, he said, uh, hey, silver and gold have I none, uh, but such as I have. Uh, he's saying what I do have, uh, I'm going to give it unto thee uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, he said rise up and walk. Uh, and that man jumped up. Uh, he leaped. Uh, he started shouting. Uh, it wasn't because he paid something to him. Uh, he gave him the riches of God uh, that were working inside of his life. Amen. You don't have to have great worldly wealth to do worldly ministry. But you better have the Holy Ghost. You better get on your knees. You better get filled with the Spirit of God. Folks, it doesn't matter the size of the congregation. It doesn't really matter what the building looks like. If the Holy Spirit falls down and sets you on fire, you can do the work of the ministry. Uh, uh, you can show people who Jesus Christ truly is. Uh, we can make people rich with the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, come out of her, my people. Why? He said that ye be not partakers of her sin. Peter said we need to be partakers of the divine nature. Meaning we can't rub elbows with Babylon without acting like Babylon sooner or later. It's time to come out. That we be not partakers of her sins. Her sins of idolatry, her sins of loving money and things and pleasure more than wanting Jesus. He said that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues. You know why people have so much spiritual warfare in this hour? Because they do not yet have a made up mind. We're torn between heaven and earth. But when you live on your knees and you feast from this book, you know what happens? That warfare diminishes greatly because all you begin to see is Jesus. All you begin to want is Jesus. And as they come to the music today, I'm telling this church, I believe God is dealing with us. I believe he's preparing us 
I believe he's preparing us for greater spiritual things that we have never seen in this church. But I also believe he's preparing a people, getting a people ready for things that are coming on this world. And I'm saying we need to prepare by making sure, making our calling and election sure. We need to prepare by moving away from the gods of this world. We need to prepare by moving deeper into the things of God. And we must prepare by making Jesus more than enough in our lives. You see, that's one of the great problems today. To many, Jesus is not enough. I want us to see something today. All the way back in the book of Numbers, God said to Israel, he said, you're my people. But within my people, he said, I am going to choose a tribe called Levi. And Levi is going to have a special relationship, he said, with me. You're my people. He was telling these other tribes, but you can't come into the tabernacle, but I'm going to let Levi come in. Levi can touch the holy stuff. His children and his family are going to be involved in these holy ways. Then the Lord said something to the Levites. Numbers 18, verse 20, it says, And the Lord spake unto Aaron, Thou shalt have no inheritance in their land, neither shalt thou have any part among them. Here's what got me. He said, I am thy part and thine inheritance among the children of Israel. He said, I'm thy part. He was saying, I'm your portion. They're going to get some land. You're going to get me. He said, they're my people. I'm going to take care of my people. But among those people, I'm looking for a special person who doesn't just want the blessing of land, who doesn't just want a blessing out of my hand. I'm looking for somebody, he said, who just wants me. And he said, I'm going to give you me. Hallelujah. He said, I'm not going to give you land like these others. They'll all have plots. They'll all have an inheritance. They get dirt. But you get me. They get grapes and sheep and cattle. But you get me. They have blessings more than they can count. But he said, you're going to get me. So I've come to ask you today, Somerville, what do you really want? Do you serve him because of the blessings that he's given you from his hand? Do you serve him just because you want something from God? Do you serve him because of the things he has blessed you with or, or some miracle or sign or wonder that you're looking for? Or do you just want him? Is Jesus enough for you? Folks, I'm telling you, when he becomes enough for us, you'll have a peace and a joy. We'll experience things we've never experienced when we say, Jesus, you're enough. Do you want to live in the heart of God? I'm saying, are we willing to move far enough away from Babylon and pull ourselves away and slam the door and shut it and walk away, be done with its allurements and say, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold and houses and land. Uh, I, I, I want Jesus in my life. I want Jesus in my marriage. Uh, I want Jesus in my family. I, I want Jesus. Uh, I want his spirit to fill up my children uh, more than I want them to have a job or a career and be successful in Babylon. I want them uh, to I have you, Jesus. See, he'll take care of the rest of the stuff. He'll give you what you need. When you put him first, when he is all you want, when he's enough for you, you'll have enough in your life. So many times we've made God out to be something like some vending machine. God, I need you to give me this. I need a new this. I need a good retirement. I, I, Lord, I need this sign. If you'll just show me this sign. But I believe the Lord is saying to every one of us right now, I can give you me. I'm trying to give you me. 
thank God for it. I thank God for his provision. I thank God I want to be a good steward of what he's blessed me with. But I'm going to tell you, none of those material things in my life have ever given me joy and peace within. All of it, I've had to paint it, repair it, I pay for it. Uh, it comes at a cost. Uh, but with Jesus, uh, you just wake up every morning, he's just there. Uh, you go to bed at night, uh, he's with you. You get in the car and drive down the road, he's right beside you. He's more than enough, folks. Uh, he's more than enough. We need to decide today, is he more than enough for me? What if we said, take this whole world, but give me Jesus? You see, that's a hard thing to pray. Lord, do I love you more than my stuff? What if you took my house? What if you took my land, Lord? What if you took everything I own, Lord? Would you be enough? I can tell you today, he is. We're going to take communion today. Everybody got your elements? I want you to stand this whole day. Just keep playing here. Folks, God's doing something at Somerville. I don't know if you noticed it, but he's doing something. He's drawing us to him, closer to him than we've ever been. But we're going to have to decide that he's enough. I want everybody that will. And I know there's probably not enough room, but if I want everybody that would just join me in this altar today. Just keep playing for just a moment. Before we even participate in this communion, this Lord's Supper, I want us to stand in this altar. And I want us to say, Lord, is there anything that I need or can eliminate from my life that will draw me closer to you, Jesus? Is there anything in my life that's in the way? Is there anything, addiction, I, I don't care what it is, material thing, anything I'm driving towards, anything, God, has anything become my God to the place that Jesus is not enough? I want you to ask him that. And I want you to be prepared for him to tell you what he's going to tell you. He may tell you something you don't want to hear. But would you just say, Lord, move that out of my life and help me today as I have communion with you that I will say Jesus is more than enough for me. You know, as Courtney said earlier, I, I love my family. Man, I love the fact that I have a wife that I can tell her I love her and she says, I love you back. I love the fact I can sit around a table and enjoy my children. And folks, if you have your children, if you have your family and you can be together, uh, uh, folks, I, that's a blessing. Yes, it is. But I'm saying today, are we able to say we have a Savior? Jesus, who said he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. I'm telling you, there are greater storms that are coming on this old world. Jesus is coming back. Jesus is going to pull us away from the wrath that's coming, but there are storms we're going to face, uh, I believe, even before he comes. And I'm saying, are you prepared today? You know, if you got Jesus, you're ready for it. I believe we can answer that question this morning by remembering what he did on the cross of Calvary. You see, he fixed the greatest problem in your life and that was a sin problem he made a payment for it and that payment was enough he's not continuing to make payments on it <laughs> he's not like us I, the bank owns my house I'm just making payments on it but Jesus when he went to the cross he said I'm gonna make a payment with my blood I'm gonna do it once and I'm gonna do it for all I'm gonna do it for you it's gonna be enough You'll stand before God. You'll be justified because you're covered in my blood. I'm going to do it so you can have life. I'm going to do it so the chains of sin are broken off of you. I'm going to do it because I love you. And he said, it's enough. When he said it's finished, that was enough. So I want you to take this bread today. It's simple. It's plain. It's for everybody. It represents Jesus today. 
He's the bread that came down from heaven. And I want us to say thank you, Jesus, for being enough. You see, we're all in this together today. Maybe right next to you is a brother or a sister that's had a setback. Maybe they're struggling this morning, but we're all in this together. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus is right in the middle of it, and he is having communion with us. He's saying, I am your portion. I'm all that you need for eternity. And he is preparing us to see him face to face. Are you prepared to meet him today? To see him face to face? Right now is the time to examine yourself. Lord, we just come to you today in this room. Lord, what a beautiful crowd in this place today. Believers in Jesus Christ. Lord, help every one of us to realize that you are enough. Lord, the bread that came down from heaven, we thank you for it. Your body that was broken, God. Your blood that was shed. It was enough, Lord. Help us, Lord, in this place to realize that you are enough. You are more than enough for me. By the Lord's invitation, I want to invite all of you who believe and accepted Jesus as your Savior to participate in the Lord's Supper today. In the very hours before his suffering, Jesus sat and he supped with his disciples. The Bible says when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do, he said, in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup. When he had sub saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The Bible says, for as oft as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. I want you to reach over to the one next to you. Maybe your family, maybe your wife, maybe a friend, maybe somebody in this congregation. Just reach over. Maybe you're able to put a hand on their back or just. But I want you today to pray for that one next to you. As we end this service, I want us to reaffirm that Jesus is enough. What he did on the cross was enough. He's enough for your family today. He's enough for the situation in your life. Uh, he's enough for what you're dealing with. Uh, he's enough to take care of the trouble. If you'll just say, Jesus, you are enough. Let us all pray today and say, Lord, help, help me to realize today that Jesus, you're enough. Lord, we come to you today, Lord God. We're living in a life that is so complex where people are going through situations in their life Lord, the enemy's trying to destroy marriages and homes and families. But I pray today, God, help this church to realize you are more than enough. You're more than enough, Lord. You're more than enough to supply every need. You're more than enough to break the bondage of addiction and chains and sin. You're more than enough to heal, Lord. You're more than enough uh, to come in, uh, Lord God, and work and bring revival. God, not to look to this world. Help us to get our eyes gazing upon you, Lord God, and realize that you are all that we need today, God. You are more than enough. Lord, bless this church today. Bless all people, Lord God. Lord, help them, Lord, as brothers and sisters in Christ to realize, God, Lord, you are all that we need today, God. You can supply every need in our life today. Lord, if somebody's here today, God, and does not truly know you, God, I pray, Lord God, open their heart to say, Jesus, come in. Be the Lord of my life. I repent of sin. I, I repent of in my life. I need a Savior, Lord. Oh, just come in, Jesus, today, God. Lord, touch our people today. Lord, overwhelm this place with your presence. Lord, help Somerville Family Worship Center to bind together and say, in this hour, Lord God, in the face of the world, uh, 
see the evidence of his goodness in your life? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful presence of God here today. And uh, I tell you, let's, let's go out rejoicing today. Amen? Yes. I see the evidence of his goodness all over my life. He's yes. enough for me today, folks. He's enough. As we leave here today, love on one another. Don't forget, uh, we do have, uh, I think Brother Kenny's gotten with uh, a few of the men. We're getting ready uh, for this discipleship program. Uh, we're going to have a meeting with just a few of the men leaders that he's called at 5 o'clock. Don't forget about that, those of you that he's spoken with. I don't want us to forget about, I want us to be praying and fasting about August the 27th. I believe that's the date. It's a, it's a Sunday evening. We're going to try to start uh, this discipleship program for all. It's going to be for everybody. We're going to have an emphasis on our men, uh, our youth and children, also our ladies, but we want everybody to be involved in that. Uh, we're launching out into something new. Uh, so, you know, new all the, is not always easy. <laughs> uh, but we're going to work through that, and I just believe you're going to be blessed. Uh, we're we're going to do some discipling that's going to help, I believe, our people. It's going to help you. It's going to feed your soul. We're going to have uh, older men and ladies training younger, uh, and we're going to be just rejoicing and worshiping uh, in God's Word in those evenings. So I want you to be praying about that and be ready. Put it on your calendar. Sunday night, we're going to start at a, on 5 o'clock. Uh, that'll be one Sunday night a month. So go ahead and clear uh, your calendar on that Sunday night, August the 27th. Uh, uh, with all of that said, you look good this morning. He said, well, Brother John, you look good, too. Well, thank you. <laughs> I try my best. Okay. Uh, okay. But love on one another as you leave this morning. Just enjoy this day that the Lord has made. And we just thank you for being here. You're dismissed. Amen.